let's start this webinar. My name is Hanif Lomo, and I'm working as support engineer in Stroth of Denmark. And we have also my colleague, Frederick Lagström from Sweden. He will be answering your question, if you had. So let's start with a short presentation of uh, FEM design. So I'm going to uh, shortly present the interface of the FEM design for those guys who are new to FEM design. As you can see, FEM design like Microsoft Office, it has menus and tabs, as you can see, changes, and uh, the workflow is always from light uh, from right, uh, from left to the right. You first here do the modeling in the structure, and then you apply the loads, and then you look at the finite elements, the mesh part, and then you have the analyzes, and these last four are the design part. And here you have the shortcuts, like other programs, and here you have the reference lines that you can use it, like in Revit, and here you have some icon for modification, erase, move, and here at the bottom you have like a command line, you can enter the coordinate or angle exactly like uh, AutoCAD, and here you have, uh, as you can see as I'm moving the mouse, you can see the position of the mouse, and here you have the layers, exactly like AutoCAD, you can turn and off layers, and here you have the snap tools, the same way, you can turn them on and off. And here, you have also some other um, shortcuts for plain view and shadings, and also stories. So here, I'm going to make a very simple model, because this webinar is uh, mainly about the RC part design, so it will be more as uh, beams and columns. So the first thing I will, uh, to define the story. If I press on this one, the story, as you can see, this dialog box shows up. Here it's asking about the horizontal size of the building. As you can see, it's 50, so we are going to type 24 here and 18 here. So 24 is always this direction, the x direction. The x direction is green and the orange color, as you can see here, it's the y direction, it's, uh, and also this direction, which is the z direction, is always blue. So here, we define a story, and here you can see uh, the height. So in this webinar, one story is enough, so we press on this one, okay. As you can see here, the story is created, so let's, um, uh, draw some grid lines or axis. So here we're going to make four of six meters. So choose this way in y direction. As you can see, those numbers appear here one, two, three, and five. And here, the other direction we choose later. And here, we define 3 divided by 6. As you can see, it's uh, the other side. So we are going to flip it by holding Control, right click. As you can see, it's flipped. So as you can see, they are, are in the alphabetical order. So now, we are going to draw some columns, press on this one, and here we press on the default setting to define the section. The first one is the section, so let's put some 300, and here we can define the endpoint and the releases for the column, so we keep it the default one, and here we can define the, the material, we choose the concrete, this concrete, and here you can change the parameters. 
you can see it's for the gamma and also for the creep. Maybe this one is more relevant for you, the creep. And this, the first one is, this one is for the surface serviceability and the other one is for the ultimate limit. And you can also define the shrinkage. But we are going to keep the default one. And here you have the option, as you can see, you can position it below or above. We are going to choose above. So we're going to position the columns here. And as it takes time to put everyone, so every one of these columns, let's choose the array function. So we choose the array and we select these columns and we say that it should make around five of them and the row should be one and the distance between them was six and we don't want any row so we put just zero here. As you can see now they are array. So now let's draw the beam. It's the same way as you can see you click on the default setting and here you define uh, the section. So let's choose something like this. This section and the material which is again the same. Let's draw them here. And we can do the same here by just array them. Like this one. So we say column, it's five the same way. As you can see now they are drawn. So we can do the same for the this direction. So but here we can choose just the copy instead of just drawing them. So we can choose the copy function. And here, as you can see, it says select the base point. We choose this point, and then we are going to position them. And here, the same way, we can array them as well. And we can also copy them if you want. But this is maybe faster. The same way. OK, it should might be four, but we did it five, so it doesn't matter. We can just erase them. So now we have the frame. So the next step maybe add the support. We're going to add that one. You can position this for each of them, but you can do it all for once. You can click on this one. And then we rotate it a little bit select these ones. Now the supports are added as well. So here we can, uh, now we need the plate, but we are not going to use the plate, we just use the cover because it doesn't have any stiffness and it's really good for distributing the load. So as the main subject is uh, column and beam design of them. So we are going to do that. So we use the cover and just draw them here. As you can see, it's distributed correctly. So this area is, the load in this area is taken by this beam and this area is taken by this beam and this area is taken by this and this area by taken by this beam. So now, so we are done with the structure part. So now we are going to the load. So here, the first thing we define the load cases. So we define a dead load. So we choose a structural dead load. In this way, when we choose a structural dead load, can design automatically take 
calculate or take into consideration uh, the cell width of the section that you use. So we choose this one and then we define a live load. We call it live load one. And we, here we choose ordinary. And here we can select different kind as our uh, structure is mainly concrete. So it doesn't matter which one we choose here. This one is more for the timber design, as you can see. It's referring to the Euro code for the timber. So we are making also another one, another live load. We call it live load two. Here the same, we just press OK. Now it's defined. So from here we choose live load one. And here you can uh, apply point load, line load, and surface load and other kind of loads. But here we're going to apply uh, surface load. So we choose uh, 1.5, maybe that's enough. So we chose pick existing region, just right click. But of course we can do it this way. We can select a small portion, bigger portion, and yeah. Now we are using this one. So it's applied here. It was for the live load one. And let's apply another one. So 0 0.5. And this one, we choose this and apply it this way. So now we have applied uh, two loads, including the dead load. So now we are going to the load combination. So here we are defining the load combination. So let's create an ultimate limit state. The type here, you can choose different type. As you can see, the first one is ultimate limit state. The other one is ultimate accidental limit state. And this one is seismic limit state. And quasi-permanent, serviceability, and also frequent, and characteristics. This one is important. Usually when you do the design, so you use the ultimate. And when you check for the crack section analysis or deflection, then you can choose the, the serviceability. So here we choose 0 0.5 and the low, oh, maybe 1 for this one. Here we can choose. 0.5 and also 1.5. So the first one, maybe it's enough. We just do for the ultimate limit state. We press OK. And now we can go to the this step, but as there's no plate, there's, it's not going to generate any mesh. So we go directly to analysis and press on this button, calculate. And here we have diff, we can select load cases in perfection, yeah, analysis, but here we only choose the uh, load combination. Press OK. Now, as you can see, it took about 10 seconds. It's done. So we can press on this one to look at the result. So if you want to look at the internal forces, for example, normal forces, you can see it here. And you can see a detailed result of them. If you just right click on them, as you can see it here. And if you have different load combination, you can also select it here. And you can, of course, display the numeric value of them here. And you can increase, decrease the decimals. And also the font size, if it's small. So to get out of this one, you can just go click on this one, model one, or you can just close it. And you can also select for the columns and beams from here. It's a list. So we are closing this one. So. 
this one is not yeah so much relevant for this webinar so we go directly to RC design as you can see here RC design it has these three options the first one is for bar reinforcement the other one is for the surface reinforcement and this one is for the punching as this webinar is for bar reinforcement so select this one and here the first one is configure calculation as you can see here it says that if you do a second order analysis which one it should use but as I have chosen Danish National Annex so it's, it, has, it gives you only this option and you can also select here for other National Annex it gives other options and I have to point out that this National Annex is important uh, because uh, it's also when you select which national annex it's also choose which library is relevant for that national annex uh, so in here buckling lane you can define the buckling lane for the stiff direction and this one is for quick direction and from here you can choose different Buckling chips, and you can also define uh, the beta version, and you can see you can also define your own. For example, here you can put it 0 0.5 or 0. Some, and you can also res reset them if you made any mistakes. So it's really straightforward. And here is a check if you want if you have applied reinforcement then we can check it but we haven't applied any reinforcement this one is for the group I will get back to you about this one and here we have um, the auto design and here we have the manual design the auto design it automatically going to design it so you don't have so much control over it over uh, other than you choose the size of the stirrup and the steel quality and here you have more control over the whole design process so the first one we are going to select auto design so here we are going to design as you can see here you get these two options one is design another one is parameter if you select these ones for example just by selecting then it gives you the option to choose which kind of for example for stirrup which is still quality you want to use as you can see it's in it's Danish National Linux so it's give this kind of naming and you can actually see it here what's the yielding as you can see KP it's better to use this one so we choose this one and of course you can define your own or modify them if you want you just give them a name and you press new but we can keep the default one and here's the diameter you can define it this is for the stirrups with which diameter you want and here you have the profile smooth or red and this one is the longitudinal so these ones the same way you can define the um, steel quality diameter and the profile and here you have the longitudinal auxiliary it means like the additional one that it's if needed so you can also choose from here and here is the, the cover you can define it here just by clicking on them and set it here the value or you can just type in and click set all so it's going to apply the same cover all around and if you click here you can define the aggregate size and if you click here you can uh, define the vibrator space something like this I'm going to disable it again so we press OK it means that we are happy with this selection now we go to 
design, as you can see. If you click here, so if you don't know this C21, same the design is flashing or blinking, that it says it's this one. And if you select the other one, then it's also do, doing the flashing. So you can just press the design. The parameter is the same as this one that we saw earlier. As it was, this one is column, so that's why it, is, it looks like this. But you can also just right click. So same design, design only that one. So let's do that. We right click on this beam, as you can see. Same design, did the design, as there appeared a check mark here. And you can see the utilization. This one is the first one is section utilization. And here you can see the stereotypical utilization, concrete, and the torsional reinforcement. So you get an overview. If you want all of them, you can just select like this. Then it's going to design every single of them. But we can, if you are not happy with the design, we can just, yeah, delete them from here. Another point that I have to point out is this one, design calculation parameter. If we right click on here, you can see this dialog box shows up. The first one is it's point out the section, the space, that's going to appear in detail result. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. And here, if you want the frame design to consider the second order analysis, and here you can define the allowed crack width. That frame design is also doing a check of the crack, but you, this one should be always done at the last part when you're completely done with the uh, applying the reinforcement and you are happy with that, then you can make a, a check of the, the crack width. And here it's, you have the option, if possible, do not use compressed reinforcement. This is more relevant um, if usually uh, the compression is taken by the, uh, by the concrete. So if you want that only concrete, take it, then you, yeah. Select or unselect it here. And here is for the cotita, and here is also it's referring which cotita, and it's based on the euro code, so you can define it also here between one and I don't remember maybe two point five, so we can define it here. So it we did the auto design. So let's now do also an auto design for only one of this, this, this beam. And if we look at how does it look, the reinforcement in this one, we can click on here, manual design, and you can see it here. And here's the stirrup and the longitudinal rebars. And here you have also the option to view, to view it in 3D. If you are not happy with this kind of configuration, you can change it, of course. You can just delete, delete them like this, and you can apply. Let's start with the stirrup. And in here, you can choose the steel quality. In this case, we are going to choose the P, for example, and use maybe eight and the spacing, which is choose, let's choose, yeah, 100. And here you can define the cover and the spacing also defined here, the diameters. So here, if you want it outside or inside, outer or inner. So 
let's draw the stirrup. And now we can draw it all the way from from the start to the end. And we can also position it to a certain distance. We can do it by pressing F12 and then see that it should go one meter. As you can see, this the positive direction. So we click here. So it starts from here to here. And we can also do it the other way around. So let's move this one from here. This is a view bar. As you can see, if I position it here, then there is no stirrup, so it's not going to show it. In here, it was a stirrup, so it's displayed. So we are going to move it to the end because we are applying it here. So again, choose, uh, we draw the stirrup, and then we select from this point, then again we choose F12, and here as you can see it's the opposite, so we say minus one, and now we can apply this in the middle part, you can say it should be like 120, this is just an example, so We we draw the stirrups again and as you can see we have it's going to display at from here to here. It's ten of with this diameter, with this spacing, and here also the number and the spacing and the same way here. So now we are going to apply the longitudinal rebar and here you have different option group and single so we are going to choose the single so as you can see it's snapping when we go here so we are choosing 12 with this start and in anchorage 800 millimeters it's the same way so we can define it here let's choose P and select OK we position it here, and the same way we draw it, so it's you can draw for the whole length or a part of it. So we are going to draw for the whole length. And we position another one here. As you can see, it's magnetic; it's snap here to here. And now we are going to add a row. So this the number of yeah, how many you want, we, we choose three is fine. So here, this number, how many, means like two row. And here you can define this spacing, 20 is fine. So we choose this from here to here. As you can see, if you move the mouse, it's flip. So we choose inside, so again, we draw it. Now we have drawn our own uh, reinforcement configuration. So you can view it. Let's close this one. As you can see. So if you are happy with this, then we click on Let's move this one a little bit down, so, okay. And then you press on this one to make a check of, of it. And it's checking, so it shows the utilization. So, and if you want to look at a detailed result of the, uh, the detailed result, the calculation, you can press here. and then our C bar utilization. And you can see now this color appeal, it's based on this color palette. So we should click on this one, detail result. And here 
you can see a detailed result of it appear. The longitudinal rebars and the stirrups, the cross-section material and section utilization with the relevant formulas from the Eurocode as you can see here. Part one and this form the formula that it's used and it's applying and it's showing the result in tabular form and also in graph. You can see it here. And this is a summary of it for the section stair of concrete and torsion. So you have the option if you if you want part of this to be shown, you have the option to select from here. For example, if you uh, don't want crack or this one, this one, or the materials, press it here, and then it shows only those ones that is relevant. And you can add this part to the documentation. You can press here. So it's going to be added to the documentation. If you click here, as you can see, it's appeared here. So, till result of it. And you have more options. If I add a page break here, you can add here, for example, let's see. Quantity estimation for the concrete and reinforcement, we can apply those two. As you can see here, it's showing the columns, identifier, quality, volume, and the formwork that's needed. And here for the reinforcement, for the beam, for the stirrup and the longitudinal, the diameter, the quality identifier, and also the quantity. And if we add Let's add a page break here, and you have you have also the option to add these one input data reinforcement steel material fracture buckling load combination. For example, this may be relevant for utilization for ultimate limit state. So it's going to add. for all the bars as well here. If you don't want to display one of these one, you have also the option to hide it from here. For example, this one, you don't want to be shown, so you can just hide it. Yep, and I think before I forget one topic, it's about the, if we go back. So here we did the ultimate um, limited state, as I mentioned before, for the crack, we should uh, always do the check at last, and we have to define a serviceability load combination. We are going back to the load, and here we say all designs should be applied. So we say yes, continue, and here we define one for the SLS, and here if we do a crack section analysis, so it's important that you define it as quasi. So let's choose this one. One, one, press OK. So we go back to RC design. And in here, we have to select the crack section analysis. Here we put a check mark. As you can see, this one is for crack section analysis. Okay, this one is automatically chosen, so it doesn't matter. As you can see, this iteration process shows up. And now, if we press on the check, you can see here, it's going to display here. And also, if we go to the detailed result, It should be somewhere here, but I think I, 
yeah, I disable it. So if I enable it again, yeah, you can see the calculation here for the crack width. And another thing that's also important that, as you can see, this uh, uh, you can make a group of uh, a group to design, for example, all these beams with the same stirrup and the same longitudinal bars. You can do it from here if you want. If you do a group, you can make a group by giving a name. You can call it beam. Beam one, for example, and select a color. So it's important that you don't choose this three color because uh, the utilization palette color palette use this one. So it's better to use some other colors. Which you can choose this one, for example, and make them as a group, as you can see. Now it's beam one, so we can make another beam two. Give it this color, maybe. It's important that these beams have the same section. When you make a group, it should be the same section with the same parameter. Otherwise, you can't make a group. And if you want to add new elements to a group, you can also do that. You can also uh, like explode them or destroy them as, uh, as a group. If you click on this one, you can see right click on them. Now it's, yeah, this group doesn't exist anymore. So you can make them again and add new member. So you just right click on the existing and then choose the other ones, the new ones. As you can see now, these two are added to this existing B2, uh, beam two group. And now if you do the design, you can see it's blinking, so different group, and they all should. If you click here, then it shows the identifier or their name here. So you can design them at once with the same stirrups and the same longitudinal rebars, so the same reinforcement. I'm going to do this for this. You can, we can also apply the same for this one, beam one. Yeah, I think that was all. So do you have any questions?